Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at four ways to test an LED. Two of those will also be testing for brightness and the other two will just be testing for functionality. And I've got a method that I want to show you um, at the end that I haven't seen anybody do before um, online so it might be a new trick that um, you may not have thought of. So the first one is to use one of these little LED testers. Um, now on the inside of this thing it's got resistors in series with all these sockets um, and they've got different value resistors with each of these sockets. So you can test the, the, uh, the brightness with one of these. Um, on the right is the most bright, uh, the least resistance, and on the left is the least bright and the most resistance. So you'll find that on the right side of this thing, when you plug it in, it gives you a, um, a bright LED and on the left it gives you a dimmer LED. So I've written the values because it's obviously handy to know what the values of these um, positions are so that if you're happy with one of them you know what resistor value to use to get the same sort of brightness and it's pretty good they only cost about five bucks um, and they do the job pretty well but you might need to test an LED straight away and that's not going to work for you because you've got to order it uh, and wait for it to come in so another method and this is not a very reliable method but it does sometimes work is the diode setting on your um, multimeter if you put it on diode setting and um, you put the leads around the right way. Sometimes it will light up the LED, sometimes it won't. It depends on the forward voltage uh, of the LED and the voltage that's being output from, uh, as a test from the, um, from the multimeter. And as you can see, my actual battery is going low too, which isn't going to help the situation. So the watercolor LEDs use, require more voltage than um, the diffuse type. Um, so let's try a diffuse type. You can see it does light up very dimly. Um, so it will work for some, but not for others. Like I said, it depends on the forward voltage that the LED needs to light up. So that's not the most reliable method, but it might get you out of a, um, it might get you out of trouble. The third method is to use a nine volt battery. The problem with a nine volt battery is you can't just connect the LEDs directly to the nine volt battery because it has, um, because of the voltage output, it'll, it'll blow the, um, the current, it'll blow the LED. So if we put um, this green one on, I think I'm going to sacrifice this LED to the Lord of YouTube, but let's give it a shot anyway. Oh no, it does work. Um, this is actually a flat 9 volt battery and you can do that if you've got one, test it and you might be able to use that instead. Of the other two methods, of course, is what I mean. So, um, uh, you can, if you want to check what um, what resistor value to use for it, you can use uh, some alligator clips and wire up a, a resistor in series. So the resistor values I'd recommend would be 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K. That usually gets you, gets you most brightnesses that you would need. So this is a 1K resistor. Just remember to ride around the right way. And you can have a preview of what the LED will look like with a 1K resistor. Now, something to take in, into account, this battery might be flat, and I've got a feeling that it actually is. So testing the LED with a flat battery and then putting it into a guitar pedal that uses nine volt DC is gonna give you a different brightness. So you could actually replace the nine volt battery um, and plug these two directly up to your power supply. And you can just connect a little DC jack on the end of your power supply and then use your alligator clips onto the back of that um, to do that. That will give you an accurate brightness of the LED um, if you do it that way. So one thing just to mention too, the actual, um, if, you, if you have an LED that's got it, that you have an accurate data sheet for, which is kind of hard to get these days because there's so many manufacturers, but if you buy them from a reputable manufacturer, um, you might be able to get the data sheet. If you use the formula and you follow the data sheet, you might find that the LED is incredibly bright. Um, it, it's usually the maximum brightness that they list um, in, the, um, in the data sheet when you're following the specifications. I haven't done it for a very long time, but um, yeah, it's usually the brightest setting, so that doesn't really work that well. 
Um, so you're actually better off still doing, I find still doing the resistors, um, the resistor trick or using the little, um, the little LED tester like this one. So the final method is um, something, uh, um, well, I think I came up with, because I, I don't really, I haven't really seen anybody uh, do this before. Um, I took a battery out of my, out of my, um, my garage remote, and it was, it was pretty flat. It's measuring three volts unloaded on, on, on my multimeter. Um, and I thought to myself, that is, a, that is like a perfect thickness. Just, you could just add the, you could just connect the LED directly to it. And I've tested, gone through and tested all of my um, LEDs and I'm finding that th none of them blow, um, that you can use it for any, even the, even the, low, the lowest forward voltage uh, LEDs are still fine with it. And it's a very quick method to test. So if you're, just, if you're just trying to test, if you're just trying to test an LED just to make sure it works, this is probably gonna be the easiest method. There's no current limiting resistor um, required. It doesn't give you, it doesn't, you, you can't use it to, to test for brightness of the LED. Um, it's purely just to test whether it functions or not. But it's very quick. And I do this quite a lot because I test the LED before, I test LEDs before I put them in um, guitar pedal kits. So just to make sure that um, the person buying it, it's just one less thing they have to worry about. Um, so this has saved me a lot of time. Um, it's so quick to, to, to connect it and there you go. So that's a quick one, just four methods I could think of off the top of my head, how to, um, how to test an LED. Um, two of those things you should have lying around the house, nine volt battery and, and maybe, a, maybe a button battery like the one I showed. Just make sure the button battery is flat or has been used for a period of time. Mine measures around three volts, but a brand new one will measure around about 3.3 volts. And I haven't tested whether a brand new button battery can blow an LED. I've tested this, this button battery with every LED I've got, and it's fine, I didn't have any issues. Um, but if you have a fresh one, might be a different story. So maybe just try and find one that's run down or just run it down yourself um, and you should be fine. If you've got any other ways to uh, measure LEDs, uh, any, a method that you use, um, or any tips, leave them down below. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for more. Cheers, guys.